I remember uh, in Latin Club, which we had at the time, they had things about what you wanted to be. You had to come up with your seniors and say what you wanted to be, and I said I wanted to want to be a doctor. From that point on, I just had interest in medicine, interest in uh, studying things about the human body and things like that. Uh, I played sports pretty much all the way through. Basketball, football, baseball, track, not all together, but you know, the one year I did, ran track, one year I played baseball. I had a few scholarship offers for football for college, but uh, I'd had to look at what I had to do in medical for pre-med to keep grades up, and they said, well, you can, you'll can play football for us, but you have to have a 3.5 grade average, and that, I, it'd be hard to do both. So I said, well, I, I would go with the academics, and I went to University of Cincinnati and just uh, played intramural sports. Uh, I started out in the residency at St. Elizabeth, 1974, and uh, started with two other people who were also involved in the St. Louis Physicians uh, group, uh, Dr. Todd Cook, who's the medical director up until recently, Dr. Jerry Dempsey, who's the current director of medical education. It was at St. Elizabeth North at the time, that's the only hospital they had, it was before St. Elizabeth South was built. The first night I remember I was on call, they said, we have a patient in ICU, this was 10 minutes into the first shift. And they said, this patient needs an IV, he has no IV sites, so good luck. You know, all the arms and legs have been used by IVs. He was a multi-accident uh, victim, and uh, so I had to figure out where to put an IV, and that was a little intimidating, but we figured it out. I still get to see a lot of my patients. I live in Burlington, one of the areas where I practiced, Burlington, Kentucky, and I see them at the grocery and see them out, and it's really good to see uh, patients, and I've seen some since birth. I've seen some who now have children. I took care of when they were children. An interesting thing is the physician who did my total knee replacement last year, I've took, taken care of him since he was like four years old. So his, uh, his dad called me the night before I had the surgery and he said, Matt is scared to death. This is Dr. Matt Hummel, a great physician and did a great job for me. He says he's scared to death because you're like his second father. I uh, met her at St. Elizabeth Hospital, as a matter of fact. I was in s between first and second year of medical school, and I was in an extern program, which is where medical students get to go to different departments and work to get an idea of what the hospital does. And she was working in one of the offices outside of where we had the meetings, and I went by and the smile, her smile said it all. And from there I was hooked. I just kind of said, uh, I think I know you from somewhere before. I didn't, but of course I, I said that. And uh, within a year we got engaged. The year of that we got married. The year, the summer before my senior year of medical school. We uh, have four daughters, Aaron and Krista, they're twins. Sarah is uh, the middle child and Ashley is the youngest. Uh, when I was 15, which was 100 years ago, uh, I have to say like with many people, uh, the Beatles kind of was my initial group that I wanted to start playing. That's why I got into playing guitar first. I've been in a number of bands in, in past times. This is the fourth or fifth band I've been in. The current band, the name of it is Electric Daydream. And uh, we do 60s and 70s classic rock music. I'm a huge Foo Fighters fan. I know that's since the, the, since the 60s and 70s, but uh, I just like the fact they're all really good musicians and they really seem like they put everything into their performance. We went to the Foo Fighters concert a month or two ago in Indianapolis. It was, just, it was just a great concert, and they just put everything on stage, which is what I appreciate. Having been with St. Elizabeth pretty much from the start, it's always been excellent support. I've had great relationships with all the people. I've dealt with administrators, staff, the organization's been very good as far as really being very supportive of the physicians, giving us everything that we need. I couldn't basically be in a practice on my own with an electronic medical record system that they provide. You couldn't do it independently. And they have the, probably the best electronic system in the nation. Any real circumstance that you're into, you hopefully should learn from. And it can be circumstances of approaching things differently. That, that's the big thing. There are sometimes better ways to do things than what you've learned. And I think we all should be doing that. Those physicians who do mature in professional life uh, do learn those things and, and adapt to it and also learn more things they can add to their armamentarium treatment. It all depends on the approach that the physician takes. If the patients do have more knowledge from WebMD and things on the internet, which is a good thing, 
They can look for things they might not have looked at before. And you can't discount what they say or what they've thought about themselves. But it has to be integrated in what is the whole package. With the knowledge, a patient, as I said, can give a lot of information to you and a lot of things if you listen to them. Um, was born with a heart defect, and my sister-in-law was actually a neonatal nurse. So to go through that experience with my niece, it really just kind of sparked my interest in becoming a NICU nurse.